you very much, Mr. Speaker, and it is a, a great privilege to be able to speak in this very important debate, and it, it is an honour to follow the uh, Honourable Lady from Lewisham, West and Penge. And, uh, although we uh, come at this from very different perspectives, I do uh, respect her passion in speaking up for her constituency. The people of Cornwall have a long history of being a little bit awkward, a little bit independently minded, uh, even occasionally a little bit rebellious. There is the famous time when 20,000 Cornishmen marched on this place because the King had put one of our bishops in the Tower. And even, and way, even since way back then, the Cornish have had a slightly um, sort of awkward relationship with authority. And therefore, it was no surprise whatsoever to me when Cornwall voted to leave the EU in 2016. And the constituency that I have the privilege of representing, Mr. Norstall and Newquay, actually had the biggest uh, leave vote in the whole of Cornwall. But I think it's important we recognise that that vote was not just about our relationship with the European Union, it was about much more than that. Much of it was from people who felt disconnected, felt neglected often felt ignored by what we might term the establishment. And thousands who had never voted before in any election voted to leave despite project fear and being told continually that this would be terrible for them. They voted courageously for us to leave the European Union because they wanted their voice heard. They wanted to know that their vote mattered. And I believe that's part of the challenge before this House uh, today and in the coming weeks, because this is no longer just about Brexit. This is about the heart of our democracy. This is about who runs this country and are we truly a democracy where the will of the people prevails? And are we people in this House who will listen to those that vote for us and send us here and implement the decision that they have made? A constituent, constituent of mine yesterday uh, pointed out that on the 22nd of June 2016, he wrote this and posted it on Facebook. He said, the day has finally come, tomorrow is EU referendum day, where we all get to vote on a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to decide whether or not we are in or out of the EU. It's not going to I'm not going to persuade anyone either way. I don't think it will make a difference what the result is. We aren't leaving Europe ever. Uh, and no vote of the people is going to change that. There are far too many higher powers with vested interest in the status quo to let a silly thing like democracy get in the way. He went on to say that if the vote was to leave, higher powers will set into motion a series of events that will prevent leaving ever happening, because it has to be approved through Parliament. Then we will have white papers, debates, amendments, more debates, more amendments, and plenty more political posture on either side. It won't get settled in the next three years, and then it will become an issue for the next general election, uh, election, and by then we would have served another four years under Europe, so what would be the point of leaving now? Now, I don't know if he was Mystic Meg or a prophet, but there is a great fear among many, many people that what he described all that time ago is exactly what is happening. That there is a sense outside of this place that we are in the middle of an establishment stitch-up that is trying to prevent what the people of this country voted for from happening. And the amendment that passed last night that some of my own colleagues on this side voted for and the cheer that went up that there was a sense of somehow a victory had been won over those on this side who wants to see a true and proper Brexit. I want to say that victory wasn't against people like me. It it was against the 17.4 million people in this country who voted and for leave and believed and put their faith and trust in this place that we would deliver what they voted for. Now, I want to say that I will not be supporting the Prime Minister's withdrawal agreement because I do not believe it delivers what uh, we have promised time and time again as a party. It does not deliver what we put in our manifesto last year when we said we would respect the result of the referendum. It puts this country in a worse place in terms of negotiating than, it, than we are now. I don't understand those who say that somehow what we have failed to achieve in the last two years when we have had cards to play will somehow be better achieved when we have removed all of our cards. You know, we have had the, the, 30, the £39 billion 
uh, to bargain with. We have had the ability to walk away from the table to use to bargain with. And how we think we are going to get a better deal from the EU once we no longer have those cards to play, I fail to understand. Now, people will say, what's the alternative if we vote this deal down? And that is a very good question, and it is something that I have considered very, very seriously. But what I won't be uh, won't happen for me is I won't be pushed out of fear into voting for something I do not believe is right for this country simply because people tell me the consequences could be serious. We have to face that. Now let me also say I don't want a no deal. I want the Prime Minister to go back to the EU and say there are elements in this withdrawal agreement that are not acceptable to this House and need to be removed in order for this House to support it and that is obviously primarily around the backstop. But if they won't do that, then the way the legislation is, no deal is the default position. And those in this House that say no deal should never, ever, ever be considered, what we're effectively doing is saying we can never leave the EU until the EU agree terms with us. And that is admitting defeat. That is saying we are effectively a colony of the uh, EU and we can never leave of our own volition. We can only leave when they agree terms with us. And I do not believe that is right. I do not believe that that is what the future of this nation is about. And so in voting against the deal next week, I hope that the Prime Minister will listen to the genuine concerns of many of us across the House that this deal does not deliver what we believe we promise the people of this country and go back and say to the EU and provide a positive. I believe we need to believe in the future of our country, not just our right to be free and independent from the EU, but in our ability that we are able to do that. We are able to deliver a proper Brexit and for this country to flourish outside of the EU. Yeah. Wayne David.